hivyo wale wanasema ya kwamba tunataka nafasi za kazi ziende kwa watu fulani jamii fulani wanaharibu wakati wao The firefighting continues over the recent state appointments Preempt for tactical industrial uh, action but is going to affect the universities if this money is not released preferably within a week and university dons threaten to down their tools over unremitted pay perks plus senators now plot to contain spending by the county governments and the queen's baton lands in kenya ahead of the july commonwealth games KTN Weekend Prime with Yvonne Okwara. very good evening to you. Welcome to KTN Weekend Prime. Thank you so much for joining us on this 12th day of January 2014. Indeed, it promises to be the start of yet another week in January, a long one, but we will definitely be here with you to give you all the latest news updates. It is Sunday, so that means it's Checkpoint makes a return this year after taking a long break for the holiday season, and we're calling it Checkpoint 2.0. We have some new panelists, some new faces, some faces you're used to Tonight on Checkpoint, we will have Professor Edward Kisiangani. We will also have John Mbadi, who is the MP for Suba constituency, as well as Johnson Sakaja, who is the chair of the National Alliance Party. That is the ruling party in the country. And it promises to be an interesting discussion. We will be talking about what have what lies ahead for the president and his administration 2014 he said the time for settling is over and it's time to get to work and we'll be taking a look of course at some of the controversial uh, appointments that took place and who is really in charge who's advising the president and who's misadvising him all of this later on so if you want to get in touch with us please do send us your tweets remember the hashtag is checkpoint but let's get first to the top stories tonight deputy president william ruto has defended the government's recent appointments of heads of parastatals. Ruto rubbished claims that some regions were left out in the appointments and that they are in conflict with the president's reform agenda. Asha Mwilu opens up our coverage tonight with that report. The president and his deputies' honeymoon period is now at its deathbed and the effects of their first governing decisions are just beginning to haunt them. <laughs> This weekend, Deputy President William Ruto is fighting to put out the fiery debate sparked by President Uhuru Kenyatta's controversial parastatal appointments. Ruto attended a prayer rally in Tarbo aimed at bridging the ethnic divide among Kenyans. In tandem with the theme, he defended the President's first 40 appointees to head key parastatals. Wale wanasema ya kwamba tunataka nafasi za kazi ziende kwa watu fulani, jamii fulani, wanaharibu wakati wao this is the government of kenya and every part every citizen from any community any religion any political persuasion will work in this government because but underneath ruto's roaring statements are fears that the appointments could be widening the rift between his urp camp and the president's tna party even though mps present at the event were not allowed to delve into the debate a few strong sentiments managed to sneak through, hinting at their displeasure over the appointments. Mtu wako na personal interest, anasimama akisema, ati wakale wanataka wapewe hii. Nataka ni waeleza ya kwamba serikali hii ni ya Kenya mzima, luga 42, na tunawapatia kwa head deputy wetu na president, mupatie nifiketi ata nyanza, kila mahali la pepe la Kenya. Aende juu, ili tupate na fasi huku. Wasante ni sana. The president was lauded for forming a special task force last year aimed at guiding the government on parastatal reforms. His decision early in the year to appoint political losers allied to his jubilee coalition to head the parastatals has been seen as a complete turnaround on his initial word, provoking a countrywide debate. <laughs> Yeah. 
and the constitution says reflect regional representation and ethnicity representation hiyo tu kwa hivyo hakuna kitu tunaomba we are not here to beg wetu wakipewa kazi ni na benefit kama kama na niseme kwamba we are ready to work with the national government so you need to get over 100 and over 1000 that are startups so that you can get every little group sasa sio nafanya hiyo ni mpaka sasa mtafanyaje is because we have exalted our ethnic differences beyond our faith as christians Constitutional appointments in former regimes have favored men over women and older generation over the youth and have been imbalanced in regional representation. While ah, President yeah. Kenyatta and his deputy have promised Kenyans a new wave of governance, fears are emerging that they could be well on their way to taking Kenya back to her old self, back to their predecessor's way of doing things. Ashamwilu, KTN Weekend Prime. And indeed, that will form the basis of our discussion a little later on on Checkpoint tonight. Remember, we'll be taking a look at what it's been like for the president and his deputy in the first um, nine months on average since the March 4th election last year. Has it been a bumpy ride? What are some of the challenges that they've had, especially regarding the appointments? Although they assure us that more appointments expected this year, particularly those of diplomats and ambassadors, that we will see more of the face of Kenya and perhaps to wait and see well that is exactly what we're going to do and of course we've got also uh, to talk about those uh, statements that were made by the deputy president last week regarding who is advising the president or rather who is misadvising him we will definitely be taking a look at the people the president has surrounded himself with remember we invite you to participate in our discussion tonight on checkpoint remember to use the hashtag checkpoint on on Twitter and we will definitely sample some of your comments throughout our discussion today remember our panelists brand new checkpoint 2.0 we have uh, of course we will be taking a look at and speaking with uh, professor Kisiangani we'll be speaking with John Badi and we will also be talking to uh, Johnson Sakaja who's the chair of TNA. Let's move on now to other stories. The appointment of 40 chairpersons of boards of various state corporations and parastatals has continued to elicit public debate. Now the Commission for the Implementation of the Constitution CIC has published an advisory on appointments to public offices. <laughs> Public debate rages over the recent appointment of chairpersons for the boards of various state corporations. They seem to be on a roll, they seem to be uh, you know, full of themselves and they are not taking counsel. And that is something that one would be better placed to uh, advise them to sit back, listen to Kenyans. It's also possible that Uhuru is, under, is not advisable. So we must also not blame advisors too much. Maybe Uhuru like Ibaki advises Uhuru. The Commission on the Implementation of the Constitution, CIC, has now weighed in on the row. CIC has published an advisory detailing how public appointments should be made. The CIC has highlighted various constitutional principles that the appointing authorities must adhere to, key among them that such appointments must be devoid of political considerations, favoritism and nepotism. President Uhuru Kenyatta has been accused of rewarding political allies in the recent appointments. Some of the political figureheads appointed include losing presidential candidate in the March 2013 elections, Abdul Badida, who has been appointed to head the Constituency Development Fund. Former head of public service, Francis Mudaura, has been drafted as the new chairman of the Lamu Port in South Sudan, Ethiopia Transport Lapset Corridor Authority. Others are former Marakwet East MP, Lina Jabi Kilimo, former Kibwezi MPs, Agnes Nete and Philip Kalohi, and former Makweni Member of Parliament, Peter Kielu. President Kenyatta has also appointed former Mount Elgon MP, Fred Kapondi, former Konoin Legislator, Julius Kones, and former MP for East Yolo South, Abdul Bahari. The National Alliance TNA Party Secretary General, Onyango Olo, has also been appointed Chair of the Lake Basin Development Authority. The CIC also highlights the constitutional need for representation of Kenya's diverse ethnic communities 
gender balance, as well as inclusion of persons with disabilities. Although the appointments to boards of state corporations is said to be done progressively, a quick analysis of that first batch shows 24 men appointed and only two women. CIC further advises the government to take into account recommendations of the Presidential Task Force on parastatal reforms in making the appointments. It turns out President Kenyatta failed to uphold some of those recommendations. The task force, which is headed by former Mandela Central MP Abdul Qadir Mohammed, has recommended the president remove himself from the appointing process. The Abdul Qadir Mohammed led task force had also recommended that chief executive officers of parastatals must hold a postgraduate degree, 10 years experience in top management, plus at least five years as a board member. New chair of the Jothamo Development Company, Simon Gisharu, new chair of the Kenya Post Office Savings Bank Board, Fred Kapondi, and Matu Wamayo has been reappointed to chair the new Kenya Cooperative Creameries Board. All do not possess postgraduate degrees. Others whose educational background is not clear are the new chair of the Postal Corporation of Kenya Board, Sami Tangus, and Taraya Ole Kores, the new Kenya Meat Commission Board Chair, who was barred from running for the Kajiado Governorship in March 2013. All this a summary of a chaotic appointment process that additionally jeopardizes the implementation of the State House backed task force, which had scheduled a restructuring process in all state corporations and parastatals by end of January 2014. Ben Kitili, KTN. The court coalition says it will resist all attempts by the Jubilee government to suspend the Masabit County government over cases of insecurity in the region. Court leader Raila Odinga, court leaders rather Raila Odinga and Moses Watangula spoke at Changamwe in Mombasa County during a youth football tournament. They termed statements by government officials alluding to the suspension of the Masabit County governor as attempts to defeat devolution. The leaders reiterated that the response Ability to ensure security across the country lies with the national government. Masabit County has experienced flashes of clashes since the year began, and although the number of those killed is not clear, it is estimated to be at about 15, with hundreds more being displaced from their homes. <laughs> Let's bring you up to date with some news we are getting this evening. The week is beginning with tragedy for travelers along the Mombasa Malindi Highway. Five people have been confirmed dead after a PSV Matatu they were traveling in collided head on with a canter at Mayembe stage on the busy highway. Reports from the scene indicate that the death toll could rise as more people are still trapped under the wreckage, including the canter driver. Eyewitnesses say the driver of the canter was overtaking at high speed 
speed on the highway when the vehicle rammed head-on into the oncoming Matatu. Police suspect that the driver could have been under the influence of alcohol. The 8 p.m. accident occurred at the same spot where seven administration police officers lost their lives in December 2012 in another grisly road accident. Let's move back to stories of politics. The row between senators and governors is set to continue this year as the Senate prepares to introduce a new law seeking to govern the expenditure of county governments. Senate Majority Leader Kithure Kindiki says the Senate will push for increased expenditure on development. ongoing battle of supremacy between the senators and governors is set to go a notch higher when parliament reconvenes next month. Through Senate Majority Leader Kidure Kindiki, the upper house is set to pass legislation to push for more funds towards development in the counties. We are also saying we are amending the law going forward to akikishe mambo ya maendeleo inachukua 60% Hii mambo ingine ya kwenda ngambo, mambo ya safari na mikutano, ichukue 40%. Kidure criticized the governors for using county money on personal emoluments and hospitality, saying despite intimidation by governors, the Senate will continue with its mandate. An audit report released last week by the Office of the Control of Budget revealed expenditure between July and September last year in most counties had not been used for development. Wasingishu, Transzoya, Bungoma and West Pokot governments, however, dismissed the report as being sensational. Pesa ya maendeleo imeanza kuja hivi juzi na tutafanya ile tuwezavyo kuona kwamba maendeleo inapatikana na kule mashinani. Sidhani kuna governor yote ambaye hataki maendeleo kwake kwa sababu utakuwa judged kwa ila kazi ambayo umefanya. If we don't protect devolution by standing firm, I have told my governor there, my friends, sazingine tutakanyaga miguyenu kidogo kwa mambo ya devolution, but it's the only way we are going to change our country. Because atu kusema ati ni pesa mashinani tulitaka kusema ni maendeleo mashinani kwa sababu pesa mashinani ya zakuja na kuenda mfuko ya mutu lakini maendeleo mashinani ndiyo ile tabadilisha maisha hawa na inchi wetu as a national assembly we will support that bill because we want Kenyans in the counties to develop in support of the senators, Wiper Democratic leader Kalonzo Musioka had also called for a referendum to increase the county budget allocations from the current 15% to 40% to enable the county governments to undertake major developmental projects like roads and other infrastructures. <laughs> Kalonzo was speaking in Martignani Secondary School grounds during the funeral service of the late Senator Pamenas Nzilu Munyasia, the first post-independent Senator of Kitui. Masi Kandia KTN was in Yishu County. Bungoma Senator Moses Watangula is demanding an apology tonight from the Inspector General of Police for his statement that he crashed into a billboard on Thursday night. This comes as National Assembly Majority Leader Adan Duale demands that Watangula is himself investigated and prosecuted over the incident. The war of words over Moses Watangula's alleged assassination attempt rages on even as the police continue with investigations. Jubilee leaders now say Watangula should actually be charged for what they term is a stage-managed incident. But while the Jubilee leaders continue to dismiss the incident as political attention-seeking game, the Bungoma senator is accusing the government of downplaying the matter. We are talking about the life and death of a human being and if they are thinking that we've stage managed the issue so be it because uh, a person of the stature of myself and the prime minister cannot go and sit at a police station for two and a half hours to pursue a stage management and we are telling the inspector general of police you must investigate the incident that happened along Bagadi road Conclusively 
and its honorable rectangular and the call leadership. If they gave false information to the police, you must charge them. You must take them to court. Leaders must be held account for their utterances. According to Inspector General of Police David Kimayo, preliminary investigations indicated that Bungoma Senator Moses Watangula's car was scratched by an advertising billboard. However, Watangula insists that the incident was not stage managed and demands for an apology from Kimayo. <laughs> Deputy President William Ruto, speaking in Wasangishu County, cautioned security matters are sensitive and should not be politicized. Wawache kuingiza siyasa ndogo ya vyama na siyasa ndogo ya ukabila katika mambo ya usalama. Usalama ni muhimu kwa kila mkenya bila ya kujali ni, wajama, ni wachama gani. Watangula said he will not be called by the incident which he says was intended to scare him into keeping silent on alleged corruption in the government. This as Jubilee politicians stood their ground that Watangula was just an attention seeker. Angel Katusia KTN. To matters of industrial action looming within the education sector, university dons have threatened to go on strike if a deal is not reached on their pay perks within one week. The dons are accusing the management of public universities of embezzling 3.9 billion shillings. This, they say, was part of the 7.8 billion intended for salaries and allowances of university staff. Kusu made shocking revelations of the level of squander of money meant for their union members. They accused a vice chancellor of one of the public university of allocating himself almost 126 million shillings, money meant for university dons and workers. In another university, 60 million was shared among three top officials a vice chancellor a deputy vice chancellor and another deputy vice chancellor so their culpability is beyond reasonable doubt because it is documented in a document authored by none other than university finance officers chuo kingine kinasema kwenye document yao hawana mkubwa yoyote ambaye anaweza aitwa top university manager hawana zero wameandika zero lakini amepewa milioni 125 huyo zero sasa huyo zero amechukua Milioni moja, milioni mia moja tano, peke yake. The university unions have put on notice all the 23 public universities and nine constituent university colleges over the alleged embezzlement of monies totaling 3.9 billion shillings. The money is part of 7.8 billion Kenya shillings to be allocated to members of the two unions following a collective bargaining agreement between the university dons, their employer and the ministry. All these things that vice chancellors did with this money, other than the little that they paid to staff, is fraud, is corruption. Money was meant for two things, basic salary and housing allowance for eligible members of staff. It is in that connection that we are also insisting that the role of the then Minister of Higher Education, Science and Technology be investigated because it is the ministry that is must he junks of this money to constituent colleges and new campuses. The damning revelations contained in an audit report presented to the government in December last year reveals massive misappropriation of funds through payments to ineligible staff that include top university management staff, casuals and part-time lecturers, among others, while allocating money to 
to the then non-existent universities and university colleges like Intaita Taveta, Garissa, Kibabi, amongst others. The two unions are now demanding that all the funds meant for the allowances and wages are released immediately, failure to which they will resort to industrial action. That is going to affect the universities if this money is not released, preferably within a week. In the meantime, they have submitted their complaints to the Ethics and Anti-Corruption Commission to investigate managers and vice-chancellors of public universities on corruption, abuse of office, and misappropriation of funds meant for the benefit of university staff workers. Zipporah Karani, KTN. Nairobi's Isli area is grabbing attention again. This time, however, it's not for the wrong reasons. Now, a little-known school located at the heart of Isli beat all odds to grab the third position in Nairobi County in the recently released KCPE results. KTN's Sharon Momani brings us the story of a school that was also ranked 11th nationally. The drive to Alansaru School is quite literally rocky. The surrounding is noisy and polluted, giving a clear picture of what the pupils go through as they commute to and from school. But behind this unpleasant welcome and inside the school is a different environment altogether. It is clean and it is quiet, save for the ongoing lessons. In recent years, the school has transformed itself into a reputable academic giant due to its consistent excellent performance in national examinations. The walls of Alansaru Primary School shielded from all that is associated with its location. And once you're inside the institution, the writings on the wall clearly indicate that academics hard work and discipline take center stage with a performance mean index of 399.9 the school was ranked third in nairobi county behind makini ngong road academy and new light junior academy in komarok it was ranked 11th nationally and emerged as the best performing muslim school in the country <laughs> Wanawamutisha, wanafunzi, wanafunzi pia wanajitolea. 424, mia ini shena ine. The school's top performing students were today awarded at a Thanksgiving ceremony attended by former presidential candidate Abdu Badida and former deputy speaker Farah Maalim, stating that insecurity in the area was a bump in their education journey, one they had to overcome. The, the, the environment was a bit tough, but uh, to tell the truth, the environment doesn't matter. The education, what the teachers gave us was the thing that was very important. Vita, vita sikika, katika si 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 apatu kila pahali. The school's exemplary performance, however, comes against unrest following the revised Form 1 selection criteria. The revised guidelines indicate that candidates from both public and private schools will be treated equally, stating that the top four candidates from every district, male and female, will get places in national schools of their choice. The rest of the candidates then have to battle it out for slots through a given quota system. The immediate concern of parents and teachers of private primary schools is that bright pupils from private schools will be unfairly penalized. Sharon Mumani, KTN. Right, indeed. Like the young man said in that clip, environment doesn't matter. It depends on your determination. Good luck to them. Of course, we wait to see what that Form 1 selection will be like. That's happening on Tuesday. And do keep it, KTN. We'll keep updating you on that as we go. We want to take a short break, but you know what's coming up right after. It is a checkpoint. And the president recently said time for settling down is over. What has it been like? What do we look forward to in 2014? Of course, we'll definitely be discussing those controversial appointments. And my panel tonight we're calling it checkpoint 2.0 it is a brand new year and we definitely have some new uh, faces some you know you know professor kissy angani he will be joining us we have johnson sakaja who's the national chair of tna and we have john buddy who's the mp for suba the two like to call themselves progressive hecklers so 
not just heckling for nothing, but it'll definitely be progressive. You do want to stay with us. Remember, if you want to participate in the discussion, do so on Twitter. My handle is at Yvonne Aquara. You can also tweet us at KTN Kenya as well. Remember to use the hashtag Checkpoint. We'll see you after the break. Checkpoint is back. This week, we focus on the controversial parastatal appointments. Reputation is always awarded the universities by the exchequer. Unions are not expected to negotiate for capitation, but this time round, the money we negotiated was used as capitation without our consent. We therefore advise the Minister of Higher Education, Science and Technology that we, the university workers would want to get the feedback in regards to the money negotiated for household allowance and basic salary within 14 days. We have therefore decided that the money we negotiated, 7.8 billion, be immediately released to the university workers without any further delay. You are watching KTN Weekend Prime. Time now for the sports news. The Queen's baton relay arrived in the country early today and was received by President Uhuru Kenyatta at State House in Mombasa. Others who got a chance to lay their hands on the baton were National Olympic Committee Chairman Kipchoge Keno and Britain's High Commissioner to Kenya, Chris Turner. The 2014 baton relay was launched last year at Buckingham Palace at a ceremony where Her Majesty the Queen placed her message to the Commonwealth into the baton. All clad in blue tops, athletics officials and members of the National Olympics Committee were at the Mo International Airport in Mombasa to receive the 2014 Commonwealth Games Queen's Baton. NOC Chairman Kipchoge Keino and retired athlete Nyandika Mayoro represented the country in the first ever Commonwealth Games in 1954 were also present. It's also a great link between Britain uh, and particularly Scotland uh, and Kenya. Um, for those of you who don't know, I'd like you to tell me which was Kenya's first international football match. It was against Scotland on the 15th of December in 1963, just after independence. And your task for the day is to find out who won and what the score was. <laughs> Commonwealth Games ambayo itapatikana itafanyika huko Glasgow Glasgow na hii sasa imeingia Kenya na itakuwa hapa kwa siku mbili The button later was paraded along the streets of Mombasa for the locals to witness a piece of art they only see through their television sets Later on, Uhuru Kenyatta got a feel of the button at State House Mombasa before the button makes its way to the capital city Nairobi. This button is indeed a symbol of the shared values of a common bond of friendship and experiences. And it is this bond of friendship which today gives all of us the platform that we compete for as brothers and sisters who have a shared heritage. It was flagged off by Her Majesty the Queen on October the 9th. It will travel 288 days and cover 190,000 kilometers, making it the longest relay in the world. According to the 2014 Commonwealth Games schedule this year, the baton will be relayed by thousands of people throughout the Commonwealth countries, each one honored by their own nation to participate in this unique tradition. Victor Ogale, KTN Sports. Handicap 28, Florence Kamonjo shot 45 Stableford points to emerge overall winner in the second edition of the Rift Valley Water Services Board Golf Championships at Nakuru Golf Club. Kamonjo, who recorded some remarkable performance towards the end of last year, started off well scooping the first sponsored tournament at the club despite tough competition from over 100 experienced golfers. She scored 21 Stableford points in the first nine and 24 in back nine. 
Bahrain, Rafael Kimani bagged the men's prize with a score of 44 stable forward points. The handicapped 27 golfer shot 19 points in the first nine and 25 in back nine, relegating Ronak Shah to second spot with 41 stable forward points. Others were Patrick Mbuthia and Rajab Ali Wazir, who recorded 39 stable forward points apiece, respectively, but the former beat the latter on countback. Well, that's all we had time for you tonight. And indeed, thank you very much for watching our bulletin. Thank you for your feedback on Checkpoint. Keep the discussion going. We will do this again next week. Have a great week ahead. God bless you. My name is Yvonne Aquara. Good night.